Greetings, YouTube. So tell me, how did the races in your game come to be? What was their origin? Did you go old school and use clay, as in referenced in the uh, Christian Bible or Jewish Torah? I guess you want to go back that far. Or were they pulled from the head of a, 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 of a titan? Um, were they sprung fully born from the earth itself? Did a plant bear them? What are the racial backgrounds for the races in your campaign? So this is something I found myself thinking about. And the parameters I'm going to put up here is that we're going to avoid the fae. So even though gnomes and elves, it may, there's a certain logical sense for them to have been derived from under the hill, we're going to, we're going to skip that. So the origin for the races must be a terrestrial real thing. Now it could be an animal, but it could be a fantasy version of an animal. What's the what's the green elven dog, the Koosh or something like that? For example, they could be allowed because they're a they're a relatively mundane, just a fantasy version therein. And the thing can't be itself overly intelligent. So it has to be an animal, but it also could be a plant or a mineral. Or an element itself. For example, the Genesee, which were are the elemental creatures, they're easy. They came from the elements. That's just that's a that's a given. You don't have to worry about that one. Uh, but I'm thinking let's, let's come up with something more interesting for the other races. So I've pulled up the uh, Pathfinder uh, PFD or PRD, a uh, PRD, um, and it's just listing the races here. So I'm just going to look at that as my reference, and I'm going to give the guys some ideas. And uh, these, well, some of these are on the fly. I haven't really thought about this too deeply. I kind of wanted to do a freeform thing here. Um, so the first we have up is dwarf. And if you say dwarf, I'm going to say stone. That they were crafted from stone itself. But because dwarves are resistant to magic, and they have a tradition of that, I think you might actually say it could be cold iron. Iron that was torn from the earth and hammered into a shape without being forged. So I think I would go with either one of those two as far as an origin for a dwarf. Next we've got elves, and for me, elves are going to be plant-based. Um, I see them as being omnivorous, but with a very heavy plant diet. They don't eat a lot of pro meat, animal protein in the least. Um, it's fairly rare. Um, it's considered a special uh, uh, a Cajun kind of thing, and almost, and, and they don't raise their own meat for the most part, though they would raise, like, you know, fowl for eggs and things like that. Um, they prefer to go out and get their meat themselves and hunt. Gnomes. Now, gnomes, gnomes are interesting. Now, they have the tradition of being tinkerers. So you could say maybe they're forged from gems, jewelers, or you could say perchance they came from electrum, a natural alloy of gold and silver. Something, something related to crafting. Because I really think of gnomes as being, you know, alchemists, tinkerers, makers of machines and automatons and things like that, golems. That's what I think of when I think of gnomes. So I think I might go with, you know, either, you know, maybe auriculum or, or, or electrum or some kind of a gem just to be on the different side. Though, because they can speak to burrowing animals, maybe you go with a badger or something equivalent in your world. Voles, moles, that's their origin, something like that. I think there's an argument for that as well. Half elves. I don't like half elves. I don't like half races at all. So I would just, you know, you do a half elves what you want. It's not my thing. Now, half orcs. I like half orcs as far as their statistics go. I think they're a solid race. race. And basically, I would call them orcs and then have orcs be considered something like high orcs or, or kai or something like that. Um, much rarer than they would be otherwise that, or, that half orcs would just be the generic orc. 
Um, and I think they should probably come from some kind of a predator, but there is an argument to say scavenger, depending on what the social status of the orcs in your world or the type of society they've created. So I think hyena might not be a bad source for them, um, but you could also do a wolf or some kind of uh, creature that fits that niche in your campaign, unless you, if you have a, another kind of a, a predator in your campaign that fills that role, you don't necessarily need wolves or, or, or hyenas and things like that. Um, interestingly, there is some research I've seen that hyena and saber-toothed cats, the classic smilodons, co-evolved. And the smilodons were the get the killers of large prey and they could only go after the soft tissue because of their dentation. They couldn't grind and break things easily because it would damage their, their very large teeth. So they left things behind and the hyenas moved in to clean up the mess. But hyenas are an incredibly adaptable, strong, solid evolutionary uh, design so when the Smilodon died out, <laughs> the hyenas didn't. They say something for being, a, being both a hunter and a carnivore. It's easy to go from car, uh, hunt, uh, scavenger to, to hunter. It's harder to go from hunter to scavenger when your dentation prevents you from scavenging quite as easily. Okay, halflings. Now, hmm, <laughs> maybe they come from bread pudding. No, um... I'm thinking something, you could go, it depends what you're doing. If you're doing hobbit-like things, they live in the earth, they're, they're, they're cute, adorable, they're kind of chubby, guinea pigs, maybe? Um, but if you're doing the, you know, they're inveterate thieves and tricksters kind of thing, maybe something chimp-like or a clever other animal, a squirrel maybe, something equivalent like that. Or maybe a martin or a ferret. Um, I think those would be solid ideas. I don't. I don't link them with any non-living thing so much. I don't. I don't link them with like a stone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fidgeting with something in the back. I'm putting in my hand. Um, I'm a fidgeter. Um, so I don't. Yeah, I don't see them as coming from anything that's inanimate. I see them definitely coming from an animal. Now humans, I think you you, you know going with the classic clay thing. I like it. It's I know it's it's old school, but I kind of like just they're formed out of clay by the gods and the breath of life was breathed into them or they were put into a kiln um, and that you ended up, you know, animating at the process, something like that. I kind of I kind of like that um, that idea. I know it's a little on the dull side. Sorry, but, you know, it is what it is. And obviously, if you're going to be going for something like some of the aquatic races, you can do any kind of like dolphins if they're not truly full blood they're amphibious they're amphibious air breathers that can hold their breath for a long time and if you're going to go with their fully fledged aquatic creatures then you're going to go with some other kind of um maybe like a shark or um some fish spray a ray would be cool that would be kind of cool um i like rays i like stingrays things like the rays are a fascinating species of uh of shark or you know of the shark family um family family of the shark? Jeez, it's a good question. How far down does... Now, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Tax, uh, was it taxonomy is not my strong suit. Um, so let's talk about the origins of races. Where do you think they come from? What do you link with the, the classic races here? Where do you think dwarves and elves and humans and halflings and whatnot came from? Um, I think this is a real a, a topic ripe for discussion and for ideas, and I think that we could uh, all use them and bounce them off of each other.